Welcome to another video. It has become very necessary that I address the controversy surrounding the square root function and the square root of a number. I began to post um, shorts about some algebraic skills I think most students should have and I noticed that this one, one of these caused a problem and then I posted in the community um, section of my channel and I also noticed that the square root of numbers are causing controversy. So let me start by getting very controversial. Okay, the first thing, this equation has no solution. This equation has only one solution. This equation well, that's the easy one, has two solutions. Okay, so this is not the same thing as this. They are not the same, they are not similar. If you agree with the things I have said, but you still want to understand why it is correct, keep watching. If you disagree with what I said and you wanna see why I am wrong, keep watching. All right, keep watching. Let's get into the video. So let us start with the most obvious thing. What's obvious? I know that two times two is equal to four. And I know that if I write it this way, two squared is equal to four. And it is also true that, the that two is equal to the square root of four. Everybody in the world agrees. So let's do it again. Minus 2 times minus 2 is equal to 4. I can actually write it as minus 2 squared is equal to 4. And I can write minus 2 is not equal to the square root of 4. What in the world is this? Okay, this is why many... Um, or who watched my video or who saw my post got very upset because this looks like a lie. You can't have the same exact process for two things and then you get to the end, you change the rule. Well, the rule changes. I didn't change it because I want you to from now on when you hear the word square root, there's a word that is always missing, we don't put there because there is this assumption that we all know what we're talking about, but it's obvious we don't know what we're talking about. The square root of a number is the principal square root of that number. And I'm going to come back and show you what I talked about at the beginning, okay? The square root of 9 is the principal square root of 9. So it is not plus or minus three. One reason, I'm gonna come back to this, is that if you get two answers, you have violated the fundamental theorem of algebra, which states that a polynomial of degree one can only have one solution. Do you remember that? Because if you don't remember, you just keep saying stuff that you don't understand. So that's it. This has only one answer, and the answer you must pick is the principal square root, which is the positive version. Okay, I've combined two things now. Okay, thirdly, I want you to see that when you take the square root of a number, it must be the positive output. Look, let's talk about functions, okay? As soon as you're done in sixth grade and you talked about, oh, we know how to solve simple equations, when you started doing algebra, if you remember, the first thing you were taught was the characteristic of a function. Every function must pass the vertical line test. So including the square root function. So the reason why this is so easy to deal with, the parabola, this one, is because it passes the vertical line test. But we know that this is the graph of y equals x squared. 
The inverse of it is what takes square roots. So if you square something, if you want to reverse it, you take the square root. Unfortunately, you cannot have two arms of a function if it is lying sideways because the inverse function of this is when you take the square root. The square root of y is supposed to be x. See? Which is what we, we, I see people doing here. You don't do that because there's only one arm. You're trying to get x. So you can only get one answer. So you were taught that this function looks like this. But because if it looks like this, this is no longer a function. It violates or it breaks this, the vertical line test. We have to break one of the arms off. That arm that is broken off is the negative output. So all negative outputs are deleted. And therefore, the only output you get when you take the square root of any number, you see these are the numbers you're taking the square roots of. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. When you get to nine, you only get one answer, three. When you get to four, one, two, three, four, you only get one answer, which is two. When you get to one, you don't get plus or minus one, you get one. So the square root of anything you put under the square root sign has only one answer, and that answer must be positive. Okay, so this is the graph. This is our output, this is our input, and the graph looks like this. So there's nothing in the negative y-axis as an output. You cannot get a minus as your answer. It is not plus or minus. So the idea of plus or minus comes from this, which I'm going to talk about. Because again, there's so many things wrong with how we see um, this kind of equation. I'm going to solve it and then make you understand it. So, do you understand? Now, if you say, oh, it is not true, let me show you another function that behaves like this. If you have a calculator, because not everybody understands trig, but I just want to show you something. I want you to compute the cosine. If you're using degrees, no, don't, don't worry about degrees. Okay, if you're using degrees, let's do it. Let's say you compute the cosine of, let me find a good cosine angle. Let's say you compute the cosine of 240. What is cosine of 240 degrees? If you compute the cosine of 240 degrees, you're going to get an answer. Do it on your calculator. I'm going to use um, radians. So this is in degrees. This is the same thing as the cosine of uh, 460 degrees. That's going to be 4 pi over 3. You're going to get an answer. Now try to reverse it. You will notice that you will never get your 240 degrees back. You will notice that you will never get 4 pi over 3 back if you do the inverse cosine of the cosine of 4 pi over 3. So if I wrote inverse cosine of the cosine of 4 pi over 3, well, you would expect me to get this guy back, but it doesn't happen. It's the same idea that, let's do it here. It's the same idea that minus 2 squared is equal to 4. But when you take the square root, look, the square root of minus 2 squared should be minus 2. But once you compute this and you take the square root, your answer is 2. It's like magic. You can't go back to what you got before. Now, when you're taking limits, it's a different idea. But this is what happens with square root functions. You see, the output of a square root function must be positive. The, all the values that come out of inverse cosine cannot be greater than pi because this is the range. It is from zero to pi. That's what you get. Anything that is outside of this, you can't get as your answer. So even though this is the initial input was outside of zero to pi, the output that comes out must stay within zero to pi. That's why when you learned about functions, you talked about the domain and the range. This is the reason. The domain of the square root function is from zero to infinity. The domain is from zero to infinity. The range is also from zero 
to infinity. You do not see anything here that looks like negative. So where did we get square root plus or minus from? Well, I'm going to show you. It's from this guy here. So let's address this one. By the fundamental theorem of algebra, this polynomial, the solution to this equation, must have two solutions. Now, whether they're both real or imaginary, we don't care. We just know that we must have two solutions. So, what should you do? Well, what you should do is to take the square root of both sides. That is the next step. So I'm going to take the square root of nine, and I'm also gonna take the square root of x squared. Like I said, this is the genesis of all troubles that I've seen people comment. The square root of nine is three, not plus or minus three. The square root of x squared is not x. The square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. Until you understand this, you're gonna run around with a lot of confusion. So, what does this mean? If the absolute value of a thing is three, then it means this is either positive or negative. So you can say x must be plus or minus three. Because if x is plus three, the absolute value of a positive three is three. If x is minus three, the absolute value of a negative three is still three. Remember, absolute value measures the distance of that number from zero, and distance cannot be negative. So this must always be positive. That's it. This is where your plus or minus comes in, and it only shows up when you solve an equation like this. If you're not solving an equation, it can never be plus or minus. Let's move on to the next one. Now, this one is easy, right? Because the square root of nine is equal to x. How many answers am I expected to get? One answer. And because I'm supposed to get one answer, what is the square root of nine? It is three. Three is equal to x. Check, done. Nothing else, no explanation. Not plus or minus three. Fundamental theorem of algebra. And the principal root is the square root, not an alternative. Let's go to the next one. This was the original problem that started the whole controversy. It was in one of the shorts I did. I was solving a problem and I got to this point and I said, no solution. How do I know there is no solution? It's because this statement is invalid. The square root of anything cannot be on the negative side of output. So the output from a, from a square root cannot be negative. It must eternally be positive. Okay, so once you see this, don't try to solve it. Because if you square both sides, okay, so let's say, assuming we're gonna square both sides. If I square this, I square this, I'm gonna get x plus one here, and here I'm gonna get what? Four. If I square minus two, I'm gonna get four. So if I solve, I'm gonna get x equals four minus one, which is equal to three. So that's it. Okay, I'm gonna go back and plug in three just to check that my answer is correct. So I plug in three, I go the square root of three plus one equals the square root of four. What is the square root of four? Well, this only happens to people who think that minus two is the square root of four. But if you take a test or you use your calculator, it will never give you minus two. Do you think the calculator wasn't that smart? <laughs> you get your two. So it is two. And two is not equal to minus two. So this answer you got is invalid. There is no solution. Okay, is there anything else I need to say? Thank you all for all your comments. And next time, if you want to make a comment, just be nice about it. I saw some very um, annoyed people in the comments who said some things that were not necessary. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.